install this uh, start kit. A couple people were posting online, but they weren't explaining what was required for the Predator kit. It's the same thing as the uh, GX200. Um, I need to finish cleaning up the wires, but I want to make sure I got this done before I get, start cleaning up. Don't necessarily need the pole starter. The pole starter to come with the kit. Starter right here, the hole actually had to be notched for it. Otherwise, the starter was not going to clear. Just took out a little die grinder, cut the hole in there. There's a backing plate back here that used to attach where the oil cutoff hooked up to. Had to cut this down. I still wanted it in place so that we can hold the charge wire for the battery that I've hooked up that goes in there. The bolts you need for it, you need a total of four of the six by 1.0 by one inch um, bolts. I had a couple from Toyota valve covers laying around, so I just used those. Uh, everything over here is pretty straightforward. In order to get the uh, spark plug, the magneto slash coil out, you have to remove this spring right here, which is part of the governor. Looks like it's, it's an adjustment actually for the tension for the governor. So let's see. So you just take that spring out and then the two bolts for that guy remove it. Uh, the coil does have to be replaced. It doesn't allow the coil to sit back far enough for the new flywheel. Um, the flywheel is pretty easy to get off. You do have to remove that bolt. I typically leave the nut on there when I'm being out with a hammer. The fan wheel, the plastic portion, one of the nubs does have to be ground down, otherwise it's gonna hit the cover because it doesn't, uh, it's routed in, in a square, but as far as the, the holes go, you'll notice this is in, the, in like a triangle pattern. So instead of having the one down here, the new flywheel has it in the corners like that. So you do need to grab ground this nub off. And this does only go on one way. Um, it doesn't have the triangle on the new one, but it does go where these two are pointing at each other and you'll see where that goes on there. I did add the switch. This also does is do the cranking portion of it. What a lot of people use for like testing on uh, external items. This right here is what I use for the uh, power and ground going onto the starter. It's looped inside on the back for the positive for the uh, starter switch. The only two wires I use from the starter switch, the one is for the solenoid for the starter and the other one being this brown one right here, which is for the uh, charge portion that's inside. I put mine on the bottom because with it on the, the top, one of the screws weren't drilled out as far as uh, drilled and tapped. Um, one of the screws weren't drilled and tapped on the top one, so I didn't put it up here. I ended up putting it on the bottom side because on the left hand side it was actually uh, rubbing as well. Um, and then routed the wire behind that metal shield that's back there that I replaced. So for me, the way I have it set up is this switch still controls the on and off. This does have that if you want it, but because I didn't want to remove the functionality of this, um, I just have it towards the crank. I do have it though where to the starter does, pull start still does work. Um, I see a lot of people just cut it off to where it's, they just figured don't even bother.